like how casual you look then. What? Your voice doesn't carry quite as well as mine. It's because I've got a delicate it. voice. I'm confused. This isn't the normal start. What? Hi. <laughs> That's just <laughs> gone so well, hasn't it? It's been a while, guys. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Bluffers to Buffers. I'm Bob. And I'm Claude. No. Doug. Ben. Hi, Ben. Um, yeah, it's been a while, but how are you doing? You right? oh, Yeah, not too bad. It's been, been emotional, hasn't it? What's, what have you been up to? Well... Lots Apart from and confusing me with a different start. Lots and nothing, this one. Um, okay. So don't be too excited. We've been away for a little while, um, but we're back with this one. Bob, I'm going to try and um, explain some stuff to you today. And okay. Hopefully that will benefit everybody. And in the meantime, if you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe. See, this is what this little thing is pertaining to here. Ah, like, subscribe, comment. This, that's it, remember? The little notification for you yep. to do that as well. Makes please. it bing, ding, ding, tells you any time we upload a video. You don't have to. You don't have to. Because I don't like it when websites tell you to do yeah, stuff. Yeah, but, but it would be good. Yeah. I'd like it. I'd like it. Um, You'd like it too in the long run, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, if you've got through this bit... <laughs> and you're still watching the, watching the video let's get on to what the actual video is yes, pertaining please, to please explain so Bob yes as you're well aware I've got a plethora of these 20 pound model trains that we buy a lot right yeah um, most of them come in old fashioned DC format and to make them work on my layout, DCC, they need a digital chip, a little chip putting in them to work. Yeah, I know which this, is a yeah. pain because it makes it more than twenty pounds. Does it make it twenty one ninety nine? No. So you can't, as far as I'm aware, run the DC local and the DCC layout. If you can, it takes a lot more trickery than I'm understanding. You know, I don't claim to know much about this hobby. So right. what I've done is on the upper loop of this new layout building that we're building, I've wired it so that I can switch it with them switches you saw them people sitting on at the beginning mm -hmm. between DCC and DC operation so I can run some loco, some of the many locos around the track. Uh, that without, aren't chipped? Yeah, that aren't chipped. Oh, nice. They won't be able to use the whole track, but they'll be able to, you know, just get them running around the two upper loops. And this is how I went about doing it. Nice. Obviously, there's going to be some expert Nigels out there that say, oh, no, we could do it like this. Well, you probably can, mate. You probably can. You've gone there with the Nigel, well, mate. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you probably can, but I don't know enough about it to understand it, and this is just how I've wired it up, and you guys can too as well if you wanted to. This is a simple, you know, it's for simple minds like mine Excellent. and yours. And mine, obviously. So what we've got here, the two, essentially the two loops of track, left and right. Yeah. We've got a Kit Kat and a cup of tea, essential. I've spotted that. Biscuit choice is, a, you know, optional. And we've got them bus things that we've used historically in the wiring videos. Yeah. If you remember. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm having two lots of terminals for one track loop as been illustrated here so we've got a six seven core wire at the bottom being held with my hand there mm -hmm. which is one wire with seven internal little wires so i yeah. can run that around the entire track keep it tidy so two of those wires will be assigned to one of the track loops in this instance green and yellow but i think it actually changed by the time i got to doing the actual layout and I didn't use the right bus things there, so I've drawn one in. I don't think anyone's noticed. I didn't notice. No. So then we've got... Why is the fourth one empty? Well, <laughs> it's, it's a new style. All oh, right. So then we have another two wires, which will become the accessory bus. So these will control the point motors. Okay. So we can still control them digitally while we're running the track. Okay. Um, in DC analog format. And then another two wires will go to the other track loop and then there's one wire spare which doesn't get used it's quite simple in its incarnation now i can run that uh, seven core cable in the whole loop around the thing interrupt it under each board wire it thus and it just interconnects everything then okay. so it's the left hand side dcc Eat those two tracks are track loops, they can be either, they're either switchable or. by okay. the switches. So this is how it's then switched. You know, I'm, I'm, you know. Again, here's our seven core wire, stuck down with a sneaky bit of blue tack. There's one of our bus jobbies. Mm -hmm. So this will apply to both loops of track, but I'm just gonna demonstrate for the one loop of track for the time being. One 
double pole, double throw switch. So that means it goes on, off, on, and it does it for two separate circuits. And then enter stage left. We've got a digital and an analog controller, both by Gage Master. Funny enough, both of what we are using on the layout. <laughs> that. Did you like that? It was, wow. Isn't it? <laughs> they enter, and the little bounce. Did you spot the little bounce? Uh, I didn't spot the bounce. I was no. just in awe of it, no. let's be honest. So, as, as explained, look, this is now the blue wire there. These two wires are literally supplying one loop of track. So, okay. in all instances, in, for argument's sake, the outer loop, blue and brown will always be the track colour, the wires for the outer loop of track. Okay. I'm going to be honest, I'm really lost, but let me ask this question. So that is, in theory, like having the old school pins from a, an old style Essentially, track. yeah. Right. So, so if you, I'm kind in of with previous you. videos where I've soldered underneath the track, yeah. this is just an example. Of, right, so that just gives it its power. Yeah. And so that track loop is then the left and the right side, the black and the red, or the blue and the brown in this case, go to either side of the central set of terminals on the double pole, double throw switch. Mm -hmm. So whichever way that switch is, up or down, it's creating a circuit with one of the power sources. So okay. all the while the, the switch is in one direction, as you'll see now, it can't, there'll be no crossover between the DC and the DCC input. Yeah. It can only be one or the other. Yeah. So as illustrated here, we've got the DCC, again, that's, Imagine your two little wires that you plugged out of your... Yeah. That goes into the bottom of the switch. And that's for your DCC. Correct. And because we're running the accessories off of the DCC loop still, we yeah. take those two feeds before the switch. Yeah. And that's our accessory bus or our auxiliary bus as shown here. So that's before the switch. So I can have both switched on um, without it, you know, any cross-contamination. It's probably not the right word, but... And then on the other side of the switch, we've got the old fashioned wires going into that. So now it was literally a case of switch one way for DC, switch the other way for DCC. Did it work? It did. Well, there you go. It's that simple. It, there are probably, like I say, much more sophisticated ways of doing it, but I don't understand it. And this has worked. So in theory, it's almost that little switch is an AB box, yeah. isn't it? It goes AB. Yeah, correct, correct. So this now, because I want to still be operate the points, just in case for any reason. So the, the <clears throat> what am I trying to say? The points are digitally controlled. Yeah. So you can run DC, yeah. but then use this controller for the points. Correct. Right. So these um, DCC concept points motors are quite trick. All as well as working as they have done that I've used previously, they can actually work as a switch. They've got a function to work as a switch. So as well as a servo that operates something mechanically, terminals four, five, and six are a switch. All right, okay. So if you take the power feed from the points themselves to make sure that there's absolutely, you're not, there's no chance of um, short circuiting or going the wrong way around, take the dropper wires off the bottom of the points into terminals four and five, and then the frog wire that we've talked about previously goes into terminal six, and basically four and five are switching the frog between themselves, and the digital control is on the other end of the point motors on one and two, as it's been wired previously. Just means that you're basically operating a switch as well as a mechanical uh, servo. It's quite, it's quite a clever little box of tricks, really. Yeah. So I was thinking, oh, how am I going to do this? I'm going to have to run mechanical switches for all the different frogs, when actually, that little point motor. It, it also, as well as that, you could think you could use it for lights, you know, signals and all sorts of things. So now I know that it's um, better. What we've got now, Bob, with a bit of drum and bass underneath to signify speed and excitement, <laughs> is your favourite um, part of the show. Okay. Me doing some wiring. I, love I know wiring. you love it. There's no soldering in this, though, so there will be no flux oh. now. Unfortunately, I've lost it. What? The flux now is gone, I don't know where it's oh, gone. R.I.P. flux now. I've now got a flux uh, soldering iron point. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see there, the, the seven core wire is incoming. I've just marked it out there so I know what I'm doing, right, actually wrote them wrong, so. 
And it's the same principle as I did with the rest of it. We're using crimp terminals, those bus bars, um, to all sort of plugs apart and together quite quite easily. So how are you finding it so far, Bob? Are you? Uh... I'm getting kind of getting the gist of it. I'm more of a practical person, so if I saw it, I'm yeah. Like, well, oh, this is you can kind of see. I'm watching you do it really fast, yeah. the drum and bass. Yeah. But I can't watch it because I'm bopping my head too much. Well, do you think this is the wrong kind of music for our <laughs> audience? <laughs> we don't know who is our audience. No, true. I d- we haven't gone down the dubstep route yet. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> that's fine. No. We're not even trendy enough for that. So um... we were spotted out and about, though, weren't we? But strangely. Oh, what, a Seven Valley? Yeah. Well, passively. I don't think anyone actually said, oh, look, there's... Oh, no, no, no. Bob no. and Claude from... Oh, Ben, sorry. <laughs> 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 um, I don't remember signing any autographs. No, no. It was a good day, that. It was a good day. Uh, but while this is going on, Bob, if there's any questions you've got, feel free to ask. You know, the, um, I've been plodding on with the upper level which is kind of why there's not been any updates forthcoming, but there should be quite a nice little one in the near future. Bought anything recently? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still still waiting for my uh, GT3 to turn up, that gas turbine, which came and then went away because it wasn't working properly. Yeah. Um, you were upset about that. Well, yes, but we're, we're waiting, so we, you know, we, we, we won't... No. Past judgment. No, 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 of course not. These but, things happen with yeah. the new builds, don't they? Yeah. Um, I have had some locos, some diesels done by Steve Neville Grove. We'll cover them in, and some carriages as well, which and some uh, uh, wagons. I think you'd call them wagons. Nice. Um, but we'll look at them in in the layout video update. I think. Um, I'm assuming something like this. And for people that have built model railways, they'll be like, "This is not how you do it at all." <laughs> <laughs> Almost certainly. <laughs> but but do you know what I'm trying to get across here, Bob? I don't know what I'm doing. This but you're works. Go. This works. It works. It, it's not too complicated. I know it seems it, but actually, all it is is just knowing what wires go to what. Which once you've started doing it, this is just an evolution. And I'm working with what I've got. I don't really, you know, I'd love to go computerised or I'd love to do this, that and the other, but I don't know enough about it or understand enough about it or, more importantly, have the space in my brain to allow me to accept any more information so that I can understand it. Yeah. Um, This all looks very neat. At least you're not just, it's not a bird's nest, is it? No, I've tried to keep it neat as possible so that with fault finding as much as anything else, if I need to unplug it, it's all sort of kind of done sensibly. And that, having that seven core wire as well is, is a nice, you know, makes life a lot easier. So in a magic thing that's happened, I've now put in a completely separate bit of track into the one I just wired up. <laughs> <laughs> but with this, I wanted to show you how I'm connecting the what, because in all of this, I need, I'm making this so I can, when I move house one day, take it all out without too much destruction and I can move it to another location so at the, the edge of each baseboard I've uh, put some plugs yeah that's a good idea some six pin plugs as demonstrated there got them off of Amazon dirt cheap they're not the best quality in the world but they've got you know the uninsulated crimp terminals in there that just push in you know they're not they're not fantastic but actually they're perfect for this because now just Lock them to job done. Yeah, and slide that bit of track in. Um, I just wanted to show that you know it's how I've kind of got away with or got my head around separating the baseboards at a later date because I guess that could be applied to if you were doing shows or whatever. Use that sort of thing. Yeah, you might use yeah, a better definitely. quality plug or a different style, but essentially that's what we're doing. And to be fair, that's something we've not really ever really done we've been to one or two little model railway gatherings haven't we we have but never really it's out of my comfort zone Bob well, especially with this pandemic I don't like being out at the best of no, times no, 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 no. to be well, honest pre- pre-pandemic <laughs> yeah. wasn't it but um, yeah so that's you'll like this that's because that's my bridge section mm-hmm. I've run the wire underneath me 
RSJ that I've put in there so you can't see the wire. Looking good. And that's where it, how it plugs in. And then with the gift of magic, it hides behind a stone wall. Whoa! Do you know what I mean? How long did it take to build the stone wall? Uh, just, I'm, I'm a whiz <laughs> at dry stone walling. <laughs> So now before I put any expensive locos on there, I dug out the old multimeter. Other multimeters are available. All you need is to have it on uh, resistance settings, so ohms. And what I'm doing there is checking that it works. So with them together, that's a complete circuit and you'll notice the change of reading full resistance. And then when you put them together, open circuits. That means we can, the electricity doth flow. Yep. So I'm connecting one of the terminals to the one side of the switch. So shall we say DCC? And with the switch in the DCC position, I'm checking for continuity, which as you saw there, and then switch it off, no continuity, right. full resistance. So we know that the two shall never meet. Yep. Perfect. And so then it was on to throwing some actual locomotives on there, Bob. So Brilliant. I think probably the best thing we can do now is just sit back and watch this. And if we let people have a, a just, rest. Yeah, I think they've had enough of us. There was well, a lot of wiring to take. It was a lot of wiring to take. In. But anyway, these, let's, let us not speak of this anymore. We're still talking though. Sorry. I think that's probably enough running session now, Bob, so we'll call that a day and we'll hopefully I'll have a little uh, update video for you in the near future. It was a little uh, amuse-bouche for everyone today, wasn't I, it? I do hope you enjoyed it. Yes. Yeah. And please do give us a like, a subscribe, click that jobby for notifications. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Um, yeah. And YouTube. And you. this is YouTube. Oh, yeah. TikTok, we've started on TikTok. Don't know what Have that's we? about. I've got no idea what that's we're about. We're TikTok. We were on there, yeah. Wow. Mm. <laughs> anyway, yeah, thanks, guys, and see you next time. Thanks, bye. Bye.